you I just short stroke it. There's got to be something better. That's what I told myself going through the years and testing the Remington 700. I'm sorry, I, I just fell out of love with a gun. Don't get me wrong, they're still good guns. I, I still have one. Remington 700P and 300 Winchester Magnum. It's a great shooter. I'm not planning on selling it now. Subject to change. But as a whole, the Remington 700 factory produced rifles left a lot and leave a lot to be desired. So I went out finding the solution. This is it. One of them. This is the Tika T3 custom build. Get this. Nailer. N L R is a new acronym. Keeping track, I hope you are. I'll let you know what that stands for if you can't figure it out. Come on. The nailer on the table. This is the solution. Cool gun. Tabletop review will cover all the specifics and maybe a little bit of philosophy of use. I can't help myself. It's so interesting. Another solution to the Remington 700 uh, problem. Uh, not really a problem, but dissatisfaction with a lot of shooters. Is that gun in the background? Weatherby Vanguard, sub him away, and that also at this point is a custom build. What? That's right. It also is wearing a medium Palma Bartline barrel on it. Chambered in 6.5 Creed more. Legacy Sports Magazine conversion on that one. Speaking of 6.5 Creedmoor, that's the chambering of this fine rifle right here. Go watch the video at the top, please. It is so important for you to understand my caliber selection. It was so important that I had to break it out into its own video. You should watch that video first and then come back to this tabletop review. I don't really care what order you do it in, but watch them both. And that will give you the full picture it's time we expand our horizons on caliber choices. And when you go into a custom build like this, several interesting things happen. Okay, first up, you can spend a lot of money. I mean, it is nothing to spend $5,000 plus on a custom bolt action, not semi-auto, but bolt action rifle. People do it all the time. Okay, this one, by the way, let me just throw it out right now. As configured, around $2,500. Less glass, less mounts. That's pretty good, I should say rings. About $2,500, $2,600, depending on your finishes, the options, and we'll discuss all that in this tabletop review. That is about half of what you would pay for other guns. For instance, I went clicking around just say, oh, let's see, I had a lot of money in my pocket, and I want to go buy a precision shooter, what would I do? Well, I looked at the GA Precision Simba 2.0, which is a fine rifle. I have no doubts at all. It also wears a Bartline 5R barrel, just like the Nailer does, right here. 24-inch tube, same. 6.5 Creedmoor, same. Xmark Pro Trigger, ooh, don't know if I dig that so much, but that's what it's wearing. Manners T5 Stock, ooh, which I hate. I looked at it, I just hated it. Sorry, I did. Um, yeah, it's got like a really nice action. I think a defiance action. $4,000 plus. $4,400. And that's without options, I think. GA Precision Simba 2.0. I just throw that out to, to illustrate to guys that perhaps are not familiar with the value equation of a custom build rifle of what's reality. Because some people, and maybe I'm to blame for this because I've thrown a lot of high value guns on the table and maybe some team peers go, well... If it's over $800, I'm not interested. Um, you kind of need to open your minds a little bit when you're talking about custom builds because an American craftsman is putting these guns together and they have to be paid. They're using top shelf materials, I'm talking barrels, actions, magazines, in the case, stock from KRG. It's going to cost you. What I wanted to do when I went out searching for a replacement for the 700, and I got a little bit carried away, I was just going to bring a regular Tika to the table. I was like, well, let's do a custom build and see what happens. See how it shoots. See if it's recommendable to my audience. Obviously, it is. And obviously, I'm excited about it. Putting this gun together for me was Jake Van Allen. Thank you, Jake. And I cannot take credit for the configuration of the gun as far as the basics go. I'm talking barrel, the choice of a Tika T3 action. And this is a KRG X-ray chassis. That's Jake. 
What the nailer represents is my configuration, my choice of caliber, and the way I want the gun configured for long range precision battle rifle. That's my philosophy of use. Not a competition rifle, because I may have made some different choices. Why do I need multicam if it's a comp competition rifle? That looks cool. It does look cool. I give you that. But it was, that's kind of what I'm after. I'm after kind of a situation. I have to make a thousand yard shot. Man portable system. I want to keep the system as light sure as possible with not target. being too light because then it gets skittish. I've got to make that thousand yard shot. Again, go watch the philosophy of use video because we covered all there. Okay, so $2,500, a lot of money. Yeah, it is. For a custom build, center fire rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor with a Bartline barrel, uh, not so much. Heck, you can get it below $2,000 if you choose carefully. You wouldn't get fluted barrel, for instance. You wouldn't get a finished stock. And I guess we'll start there, and we may jump back and forth to philosophy of use. Uh, this stock, by the way, I pretty much love. I reviewed their bolt uh, knob for the Remington 700, speaking of the 700, by KRG. I love that thing. Apparently, they make a lot of cool stuff. KRG. Top of the list for a lot of guys are their stock replacement kits. They call them chassis. This is my favorite, the X-Ray. That's because it does not cost an arm and a leg, and yet it provides the same versatility, the same function as their Whiskey 3 chassis, as far as I know. And that's why I chose it for the nailer. Which, by the way, and I guess I'll show this to you now, because you're going to see it, is named Mistress of Dangerous Things. We're not talking about just first cool here, guys. We're talking about second cool as well. Yep. If you order this gun, and I don't care if you do or you don't, but you too will get a serial numbered plaque mounted just like that right there. This is the prototype of the nailer Mistress of Dangerous Things. Yeah, it was my idea. I was like, we got to put a plaque there, dude. We got to make it cool. And that's off a World War II bomber. Yeah, the girl there. And no, it's not a double meaning. <laughs> I did not mean that, the nailer thing. It ain't. It ain't. It just turned out that way. But look at that, dudes. So we're talking about the stock. It is a polymer fiber reinforced stock, of course. And the way I mounted, I mounted this plaque here, the nameplate, I should say, uh, I just drilled into it and tapped and threaded right into the polymer, and it worked pretty good. Yours will be the same way. And I wanted it removable in case you want to go stealth, right? Maybe you don't want that on. And if you're putting it under some hard use in some sniper competitions or something, this is made of aluminum. It is laser engraved, ultra cool. Yours will be serial numbered, by the way, in the order of ordering, if that's what you want. But it's removable, so you can save it. Makes it kind of cool. I like it. But I had to show you that because um, we're talking about the stock. You're going to see it sooner or later. The name of this gun is... Uh, <clears throat> And I might put it in the tile, Mistress of Dangerous Things. Yeah, that's kind of what we talk about here in TMP. For good, responsible people, length of pull adjustable on the X-Ray chassis. It comes with three, I added another. You can adjust it all the way up to 15 inches, and I think down to, where'd my notes go, like 12 inches or something on the X-Ray. I don't have any trigger time on their Whiskey chassis. It's probably just as awesome. I know this, though, it's a... Pretty damn expensive, the whiskey chassis. This one is gonna run. If you go to their website, the X-ray chassis by uh, KRG, about 600 bucks. If you get an FDE, it's gonna be about 640. It's not super cheap, but it's about half of what you would spend on a really nice chassis upgrade for your Remington 700. You know, Everly stock comes to mind. Go price that. Here's your cheek rest, fully adjustable, and I love this. It doesn't move. Once you position it, it stays put. No messing around on the X-ray chassis. I love that. And this is rubberized, pretty comfortable, won't grab your beard, doesn't transmit heat or cold. Could you paint it? Mm, I wouldn't recommend it because it'll just peel off. Because this uh, actually is polymer, not rubber. Adds a little bit of weight, but comfortable, and it's really nice for scope height adjustments. It is adjustable. Refer to the manual on the X-ray chassis. This right here is called the Bag Rider. 
yeah, that's what it's for. You can just stabilize your shot with it on your sandbags or whatever. Yeah, I liked it. And I think, I don't have my pick rail under there, but that's where the T3 Picatinny rail would go. And you could put other devices for stabilizing, like an AccuPod or something on the back. I didn't use that. You'll see it in the video. I just ran with it like this. Technically, it is a thumb hole stock. I don't know if that's the right terminology. And I generally don't like those. But the opening on this one is so large, it didn't really get in the way. If I were to make an adjustment or a change to future versions of the X-Ray, I would add about a half inch length this way. So we had a longer vertical pistol grip, speaking of which is pretty comfortable. Those are normal side panels on there. I think you can go larger on those on the X-Ray chassis. And as you've probably figured out on the Mistress of Dangerous Things, this is multi-cam dipped. Yeah. What? You went with dipping? What happened to Duracoat and Cerakote? Uh, number one, I didn't do the work, which I actually prefer. Someone else did, but it cost me. And yes, I bought this gun. It wasn't given to me. We bought it. Um, it was expensive, but I liked how it turned out. It looks really sick, the dipping process. It's actually cleaner than Duracoating or Cerakoting because you don't have to layer the coating on top of each other. So you kind of preserve the traction, for instance, on the pistol grip. But I love the pistol grip, very comfortable, and it allowed for a perfect trigger manipulation. We'll talk about that in here a second, though. The trigger on the Tika T3 nailer. But now we're just talking about the chassis. Here's something that you will get if you order the nailer. Again, I don't care if you do or not, but it is part of the package. In testing, I found the magazine retention sucked. Kind of. In several shooting scenarios, you might see it in the video, the magazine just dropped and we pulled the trigger, didn't happen. What's going on? It looks like the magazine just dropped. Maybe we accidentally, you know, hit the magazine release. Don't know. But I told Jake Van Allen, I said, hey dude, we gotta fix that. We're not shipping them like that. And he is stronger spring installed already, and since then I haven't had a problem. Might as well cover firepower since we're here. It's 10 rounds or five rounds, you take your pick. Out of the accurate mag, by the way. 308 magazine. Hmm. Just like I said in the philosophy of use video on the 6.5 Creedmoor and its brethren, same case size as a 7.6251, and that is a good thing because it's easy to put it in a short action rifle and in this size magazine. Well done. Also, in the ch X ray chassis, this is adjustable. The gap for the magazine, you can do it yourself. The instructions are included, I think, with your chassis, and what you would do is just Loosen these screws right there and push that right there and then it tightens that magazine up and minimizes rock. You do want a little bit of rock. I found out in my shooting, but not a lot. That's about right. Very reliable. X-ray chassis is what we're talking about. Flat bottom. Look at all the versatility you have with this stock system. You can position your bipod anywhere you want it. You see where I'm running mine. Yes, it's just a Harris. It works fine. And this is actually Duracoated. Might be Alumahide by Brownell, Brownells, I forget. Short length of Picatinny rail right here. You move it anywhere you want, like I said, or just run it clean. This is called a spigot mount. It will be extra and it adds a, a significant amount of weight, I think. Oh, I can't, I actually can't remember. If I find out, I'll put it at the top. I'm talking the weight. But if you wanted to piggyback night vision, you could have a top mount in four of your optics. I'm not running that, obviously. Uh, I just put it on there to represent it. I did have that multicam dipped as well. It is a V-block aluminum and polymer chassis system for the Tika T3, the X-Ray. Looks cool, and it's very functional and very comfortable in use. Whew, cool, cool stock. I love it. Uh, by the way, don't feel like you have to go with the multicam. That's more cost, like I said. If I were you, I'd probably go just FDE if you're looking to save money. Works great. They also have black. And Seiko Green is available. And I guess that will take us to the barrel, which I'm pretty excited about. 6.5 Creedmoor Bartline 5R Fluted Stainless Steel. In the philosophy of use video, I mentioned the fact that pretty much most of the competitors nowadays in sniper competitions which again we should look to for advancements in caliber and weapon systems if you're asking me these guys are coming up with some really really awesome combinations 
they're using Bartline. Also, other barrels are excellent. It's not just Bartline. You've got Krager out there. Well, what's another one? Schillen. And some other ones I forget. <laughs> I don't know. But I, in shooting this, super, super happy with how it shoots. Uh, they're very particular when they put this barrel together, the Bartline. In fact, it's probably the most important part, in my opinion, of the weapon system. The gun. The precision bolt-action rifle. This, by the way, is a 24-inch barrel. The nailer configuration. Which necessarily kind of takes us back to philosophy of use. What I want the gun to do for me. Thousand-yard shooter, portable as possible, and yet possessing stability. Maximum velocity. Without getting ridiculous. Ridiculous to me would be a 28-inch barrel. Maybe a 26-inch barrel is too much. There are competitors using that length of barrel, 26. Few using 22s, but honestly, I think most of them are running 24s. 24 to 26. So, minimum barrel length to get the job done. That's why I went with a 24-inch barrel. And the nailer. Nailer configuration, TK T3 custom build, it will have a 24-inch barrel. Okay, speaking of which, the quality is phenomenal by Bartline. And yes, there's other quality barrels I mentioned a couple a little while back. For instance, the uniformity. To the fourth decimal point by Bartline, they pre-lap it, they finish lap it after rifling, which by the way is single point cut rifling, stress-free. Judging by the accuracy we obtained out of this gun, I would probably yeah, concur right. with that. 5 8 by 24, 2 alpha threading on the muzzle, that was done by Jake, LRP. So you can run a can, and we shot this a lot with a can. One was the Dead Air Sandman, another one the Gemtech HVT, both excellent. They will add a lot of weight to your gun though. It's just the way it is. <laughs> they have to, at least in that caliber. It's basically a 308 can. It'll run on your 6.5 Creedmoor all day long. And by the way, you don't have to go with a 6.5 Creedmoor. That's just the nailer configuration. You could go with any number of calibers. You could do 308, 7 mm, <coughs> 260 Remington, you know, whatever. Just tell Jake what you want. And he'll, you know, the barrel will be made to your specifications. I recommend the Bart line though. From what I've seen, it is a true performer. The finish on the barrel, by the way, is not Duracoat, not Cerakote, Teflon, and kind of a Seiko OD green. I love how it turned out. Now, seeing some of my other coated guns, you might be surprised that on the Mistress of Dangerous Things, I did not go full multicam. That's because I wanted something different. <laughs> I've done that, so let's do just a little bit of variety. Still has a great camouflage presentation. Not really the scope, I didn't dip that. It's like pure black, it would stand out like crazy, but it works. So, barrel's excellent. Is it the lightest weight contour out there? No. And by the way, you can change your contour. You can get whatever you want. I recommend exactly what I'm showing you. Maybe without the flutes because that will add cost. If you can afford it, get it. 24 inches, medium, palma contour. Just about right for this philosophy of use. Your mileage may vary, by the way. Getting on with it. So that's a stock. That's a barrel. And let me tell you this. Moving on. I love the Tika Action. No surprise, right? Guys who have shot Tikas love them, and it's with good reason. It is a fully enclosed action, the Tika T3. And dang, is this thing smooth. I mean, very smooth. A lot smoother than many other bolt guns I've tested here in the project. Nice big bolt handle, which is removable on the Tika. And then I have this, I think, I forget who makes it. It's a bolt extension. You can order that as well. Do you need it? You don't need it, but it's nice to have. Let's take a look inside the nailer, so to speak. Big extractor. I love it. No problems at all during the shooting with the Tika. I mean, you can manipulate it perfectly, throws brass perfectly. With a 700, I've had all types of extraction issues with some other guns as well. Not with the Tikas. They just work. Plunger ejector you can see in there. Fully enclosed action. Some will say that makes it stiffer, more accurate. Mm, maybe. 
you know, I don't know if I totally buy that, but I like the enclosed action. It is very stiff and keeps debris out a little bit more. I'm down. I love it. Spiral fluting on the bolt body again. There's your safety. Very positive. See a cocking indicator right there? I like that as well. Although in testing it, I didn't really much look at it too much. <laughs> Not so much. I would take the bolt out, but here's a disadvantage of the x-ray chassis. You probably guessed it. You come back like this, push this out, and you're going to run into your cheek pad. So this will have to be removed for the field strip. It's easy enough done. I don't take this out that often. It stays pretty clean in there. I'll just lubricate it right here. Super, super smooth. Now that takes us to the trigger of the nailer. And it is pretty much Tika. I know Jake does a little bit of work on it to make it even sweeter. Let's see what this thing pulls out. Oh my gosh, my battery's dead again. Damn it. Oh my gosh, I just put another battery in this damn thing. Ah, oh, freak. Well, I would pull for you, but uh, technical issues. Yeah. Uh, I'll put it at the top of the screen. I want to say about two and a half pounds crisp let off on the nailer and pretty much perfection. I would not change anything about the trigger as it comes from LRP Jake Van Allen. He did a great job on it. And you guys know from watching my other videos, I am a trigger snob. Okay, ambidextrous rifle. Uh, you might be able to get this in a left-handed version. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't really check that. I think Tika does make them and I think they are available. Talk to LRP about that. They'll let you know. So custom build lefty. Just reverse it, all that. And I don't think I mentioned this. Your cheek piece adjustment is rather. And that takes us to accuracy of the nailer. And isn't this pretty much where everything centers? Right? I mean, all this is cool. It looks cool. The trigger pulls cleanly. The bolt is smooth. It's a relatively good weight, which I don't know if I've told you yet, is exactly 12 pounds. It's got a steel mag. This might be changed to a polymer mag in the future, but be careful when you go to a polymer magazine. You've got to make sure it's reliable, kind of like that one. The Legacy Sports is reliable out of the Weatherby Vanguard. And by the way, that also is a Bartline 5R barrel, fluted. Stand by for the video sometime. Uh, this magazine works. It's heavy, weight at the top. Mm, you know, if they come out with a suitable polymer replacement that fits the x-ray, I'm down. That's what I transfer to, and it would save me some weight. But keep in mind, the competitor's rifles often are weighing 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Yeah, dude, they're running like USN Optics, Night Force, which are you know heavy, heavy scopes. This scope, in case you're wondering, is a Leopold 8 to 5, I'm sorry, 8.5 by 24 by 50 M4. Great scope. Illuminated. TMR reticle in it. It is catalog number 67985M1 dials on it. I love it. PRI aluminum rings, 30 millimeter aluminum rings. And I think there's a 20 MOA build in that Picatinny base right there that comes on the Tika. It will come on your rifle. Love the scope. It's relatively lightweight. You know, some of those other scopes are just a freaking brick. You know, if you want that, rock on. On to accuracy. And this is again, it's going to be fun. This is the nailer. By the way, this is uh, his build, not this gun. Another one you'll see in video. 139 grain Senars. I think these are his hand loads. Group one is right here. Group two is right here. These were side ends. So this is what you're looking at. These two groups. Maybe a flyer right there. 100 yards. Well done, Jake. Good shooter. He's a good shooter. From what I've seen so far, subject to change. There's his nailer. 100. Is that phenomenal? Um, I would say probably not phenomenal because uh, it should be, you know, basically you're looking at half an inch. But these are shooting his loads, and by the way, we're in the desert. So I think we're shooting off that freaking polymer table. Polymer table. There we go. 300 yards. This is me shooting the very gun you see on the table there. 120 grains. 120 grain shot there. That's pretty good. So that'll be definitely sub-MOA. That's about a, what, 2.1 inch group. I didn't really measure it. A lot of these precision shooters, I mean, they really get into it. They measure everything. I'm sorry, I'm not that anal about it. Uh, about an MOA group there, 140 grain. Nice group there. 300 yard shots right there. That's okay. I'm not gonna act like that's like amazing because you'll see competitors shoot and I just keep the way it is. 
at 300 yards, they'll keep them all here. But it could be me too. Yeah, maybe I suck. Maybe I was having a bad day. This is the first time I ever shot it during break-in. 100 yards. This is in December of 14. Right there. Boom. 120 grain AMAX. First rounds. Mm, approaching half MOA. Pretty close to half MOA. Another great, great group there. This is three rounds. That's definitely half MOA. That's the fourth group. Excellent. Daddy like. Okay, speaking of 60 rounds, this day I shot 60 rounds and I wrote myself a note to remember it. This is shooting with a Gemtech HVT to see if there was any shift. About a three quarter MOA, maybe half MOA group. Nice group there. This one kind of went all over the place. Yeah, I'm showing it to you. I, was, I don't know what happened. Yeah, oh, I guess there was a shift. MOA low with can, I said. Man, I'm glad I write myself notes so I can remember that stuff. Nice group here. Nice group there. And then we take it on out to, oh, there's a big target. Look on the web store. I'll eventually put it up there and sell it. These are so freaking cool for hang on your wall. Very few of them. This is 860 yards, same month. I'm shooting 140 grain AMAX, the very round I was talking about. First long range shots. God, I hope I can, I can show you. These are ancient thousand yard targets that the US military put together are surplus. I have to tape them so they don't fall apart. Look at that group, dude. One, two, three. Now we're talking. Now this was close to the ground, so it kicked up rocks. So I tape it and I say that was a rock hit, rock hit. There's a group. This is 860 yards. One, two, three. Here's a group. One, two, three. That's a rock hit there, not a bullet hole. So this is well below sub MOA right there, dude. Group four, one, two, three. So what is that, about four and a half inches? I'll call it half MOA, the nailer. From, from factory ammunition, if I wanna spend time making it more consistent and me getting better shooting the gun, sub half MOA all day long. Yeah, it's accurate. Fun to shoot too. Like I said, light recoiling. Ah, you can shoot this thing all day. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention the versatility on the X-ray. You can put stock attachment points there. You can see there's one there, flush mount, and you can put them underside and in other positions as well. Uh, I don't carry this on a sling. I'm putting it in a drag bag. You'll see it on the camera somewhere. How about competitive options? Let's ballpark it and say you don't get all the features. Like you don't dip it. You don't get the fluting on the barrel. Uh, you're a sub $2,000 gun, maybe even like $1,850. That's pretty good for a custom build and your choice of caliber. I recommend 6.5 Creedmoor, but get whatever you want for your nailer. 24 inch tube. That is a lot of value. Uh, I'm not going to come to the table and pretend like there are not a lot of awesome custom build bolt action rifles around. Some may even approach the level of value I think this one represents have it the same level of performance, smoothness, beautiful trigger, accuracy, looks, ergonomics that I think the nailer possesses. However, you're probably going to spend more money. Again, it's commonplace for guys to go out and drop four large on a precision bolt gun, maybe even 7,000. I have a friend, he spent $10,000 on a single bolt action rifle. It happens. So if you have an issue with that and it pisses you off that guns are that expensive, like $5,000, you need to get busy and jump in the forums and start to go on a rampage and tell guys how stupid they are for spending their money that way because there's thousands of them. Lots and lots of them. Jump into one of those sniper forums, I dare you, and tell them how dumb they are to spend their money on that gun. <laughs> to me, this represents tremendous value. Even at, let's just say, $2,650, all this minus the glass, dipped, coated, personalized, and this is just as important for me. Second cool, serial numbered, super cool nose art, in this case, butt stock, butt stock art. That's cool. Dial it in to fit you exactly. Cheek piece, length of pull, the trigger is perfect. Vertical hand grip provides great control. Man, it's a dream to shoot, man. Is it the best bolt action rifle out there? Nah, there's lots of great ones. If you wanna go cheap, Heck, man, you want to save some money, just take your favorite bull gun, your favorite action, send it to Jake, and he'll rebarrel it for you. And by the way, that's his monkey, not mine. And it'll be a lot less, but you're still going to pay for it. Again, American Craftsman, American Shop, American Materials, premium materials, it costs money. 
Incidentally, this is Jake Van Allen's project as far as putting the guns together, long range, precision, those guys. So you deal with them. I mean, if you put an order in, you're going to have to talk to them, get a delivery date figured out. It's between you and them, not me. At the top is the contact information, also in the description. Is it worth it? Absolutely. It may be your favorite bolt action gun ever. Get it in whatever caliber you want. Again, I recommend soft shooting, extremely accurate to a thousand yards. Six, five, three, four for the nailer. Have you figured out what it stands for yet? Nothing fancy, long range, out. I think we're on it, dude. I think so. The wind dope seems good. Check that out, dude. That's shooting off my fist, too. That wasn't super stable. That's 900 yards. Island nailer, 6.5 Creedmoor. It. Excellent. Left. That might have been on the left side too. It's hard for me to see. That is nine o'clock left. About off here. plate, right? Off it's plate. Crazy how much it picks up. Got it figured out now. That's a hit. Thousand nine yards with a nailer, six point five Creedmoor. Jake Van Allen Hit. shooting now. No jerk there. That's, that's luckily good. I was zoomed in on your barrel, so I didn't get it. Well, just no trigger jerk. I'm like proud of myself for once. Let's see if we can get five on the plate. You gonna go plate this time? Does you want me to shoot a group? I don't care. We need a group, but it do five more plate. I like it. You're recording camera? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Okay, hang on just a sec. Sometimes you just gotta be you. Yeah. When we got shot show next week. Going to Vegas, prepping, getting dirty. Freaking same hole like you guys are talking about hookers. Well. It's freaking same hole. I hope you're filming. Oh, I'm filming. What a gun, man. Wow. Jake, you put them together, brother. Thanks a lot. Wow. That is an awesome gun, man. And the 6.5 Creed. Well, for the money? I've been yeah. wanting to build a 6.5 Creed or have one built for, I don't know, eight years. I finally got around to it, hooked with Jake. This thing's a half MOA, three quarter, or one third MOA gun. With really stable shooting, it's that accurate. All hits. Okay, rush that one.
Oh, hit slamming the steel, dude. You're on it. Destroying it. Yeah. Round's complete. Yep. That's a fun gun, man. Is that one of your favorite guns you've ever shot? Probably. As far as like long range goes, I mean that's... It's pretty awesome, isn't it? It's balls on. And that trigger's awesome. You're killing, man. Good shooting. <laughs> 